Hey everybody, Kevin with Palmetto Cats. Today I'm out here with my friend John. We didn't film an intro. We're actually heading back to the dock right now. But we caught some fish in this video for my next catch and cook video. It's gonna be a catfish stew. Stay tuned and I hope you enjoy. All right, first fish on, first fish on. Ooh, he's already on the top of the water out there. Yeah, you find a little bit of the planter board and a little bit of the fish at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> Got another one biting. Oh, there we go. Oh, <laughs> that was a garfish. Oh, was it? No, this one's not though. <laughs> and they're hitting all over the place. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> it's a good one. I think we got fish on these too. This one's got one on. Yeah, we'll get it. Yeah, that's a nice one. That's a real nice one. Oh, yeah. Oh, there he is. All right, pull out straight up. Hold it, hold it, hold it. <laughs> All right, John's Mammoth, 32 pound, beautiful blue, right out here at Lake Moultrie. Yep. Here he goes, back to the deep. Hey man, that's not bad for a first catch of the day. No. <laughs> well, it took long enough from your first one, but we got another one. There we go. Being dead weight right now. Get your hat on from Texas. Turn it on and turn it sideways to lock it. <laughs> Keep the sun out of my eye. Yeah. yeah. He's coming towards us, so I have no clue. He doesn't know he's hooked yet. Yeah, a few head shakes. He's a blue cat. Is how you tell them apart? Yeah, they'll, head, they'll shake a lot more, roll and stuff. He's coming right. He's not too bad. No. Oh. Of course, we gotta go get the net. Oh, there's another one. Oh, yeah. uh, go, ahead <laughs> go ahead and get him. <laughs> real, 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 real. I guess that's a good thing to Yeah, you came off. Yep. Yeah, just a little set it there. Maybe he'll come back. Probably a garfish, maybe. Yeah, yes. That's one of the little ones that I was telling you about that are eating that didn't spawn. Yeah. And gorging and so. Oh. Come on. There he is. Uh, go for it. <laughs> <laughs> Yep, that's a fish. I see him back there flopping. Yep. I think we might be able to get the planter board before it breaks. <laughs> Catfish drama. Gotta love it. <laughs> Another eater size. Probably just grab the leader on that one, bring him in. <laughs> There's two for the cooler right there, y'all. Yes, <laughs> nice, Ooh. right here at the end of the trip. We're getting ready to go here in a little bit, and we're hoping for some more fish. <laughs> I'm gonna bring one home for dinner. That's right. Hey, everybody, just got off the water. I'm back here at the house, and I'm gonna cook up these catfish that we caught. And what I'm gonna cook, I've never cooked before, but I've always wanted to do it. It's gonna be a New England style catfish chowder. And basically, I'm gonna 
replace the clams with catfish. So we'll see if it works. If I've done my math correctly, this is what you'll need to create this catfish chowder, New England style. I've got about five strips of thick cut bacon, about two catfish, and that depends on what size catfish you're cooking and how much catfish you want in there. I really want it to be a good amount of catfish. Got two sticks of butter, a cup of flour, some salt and pepper, some Creole seasoning, baby red potatoes, that's two cups of potatoes chopped into little squares, chicken broth, onions, and heavy whipping cream. Now you can add celery, I'm just not a big celery person. So I've already chopped everything up, got everything measured out. Uh, you will need a saucepan and you'll need a couple of skillets to cook everything up, but I'll show you exactly how we do that. So the first thing I'm gonna do is cook up my catfish. Normally when you're cooking clam chowder, your clam strips or your clam pieces come pre-cooked. So we're gonna have to cook our catfish most of the way through. So I'm getting a pan hot right now. I'm gonna throw in a half a stick of butter and cook my catfish most of the way through. We don't want it all the way finished because it's gonna cook in the chowder itself. While that catfish is cooking, I'm going to go ahead and cook my bacon pieces. And I've just put these in a saucepan and I'm gonna put them on the back burner back here and cook the bacon most of the way through as well. Again, you don't wanna cook it all the way through because it's gonna to continue to cook as you add ingredients. Fish in. Basically, I'm sauteing the catfish to get it cooked most of the way through. I want my seafood to have some good taste, so I'm adding some Creole seasoning to this catfish. I usually use Old Bay, but because of the uh, pandemic, everybody sold out of Old Bay. So I got the next best thing, original Creole seasoning. It's pretty good stuff. Just add that to taste, or you don't have to add it if you don't want to. I'm gonna keep stirring our catfish around, making sure every piece gets cooked. Again, you don't want it cooked all the way through, but you really need to get most of it cooked through. Luckily, unlike clams, if catfish gets a little overcooked, it doesn't turn rubbery. I just think it loses a little bit of taste. So we'll do our best to only cook it partially through. Meanwhile, back here in the bacon aisle, I'm gonna add some black pepper to my bacon. I like my food to taste good, y'all. I add a lot of spice to it. As your catfish starts cooking, you'll notice that you'll get some water out of it. You want to save that water to put into the chowder later. So this is almost ready to go. I'm basically just looking for any pieces that haven't cooked at all, that all the edges are turning white. That will make sure that everything is cooked partially the way through. As you can see, I've transferred my bacon pieces into the skillet. I've set my catfish off to the side, and this is gonna allow the bacon to cook a little better, but it's also going to allow me to add my onions in. Mmm. We wanna cook these onions down. I'm gonna let these onions cook a good little while with this bacon. I don't like to actually crunch down on the onions, so I just want the flavor of the onions in the chowder. So I'm gonna let these cook down let them get translucent and kind of mix with the flavor of the bacon. And then I'm gonna pour in my catfish juice and some chicken stock and let that marinate and let everything just kind of coagulate together and get all juicy and good tasting and whatnot. Again, this is an experiment, so we're gonna see what it tastes like. Meanwhile, over here in saucepan land, I've added the other stick and a half of butter. I'm gonna let that melt down and then I'm gonna start creating a roux with my flour. All right, so now I'm gonna add in my potatoes. That's two cups of potatoes. I use baby reds. You can use whatever you like. I left the skin on the outside just for color. The soup is gonna be a very white, pale looking chowder. Hopefully that red will shine through and make it look a little bit more appetizing. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a strainer to pour my catfish into so that all the good juices will go down into this potato mixture. 
yummy. And for the chicken broth, I'm just gonna put just enough in to cover those potatoes up. I don't like to use water because there's no flavor in water. Uh, you can replace it with beef broth or you can use water if you'd like. I'm gonna cook this mixture down until the potatoes are nice and soft. Uh, you don't want to bite into a hard potato and a chowder, that's for sure. All right, I got my butter melted. I'm gonna pour in my flour, my one cup of flour in here. It's looking mighty fine, mighty fine. Now we're gonna get our heavy cream and add it into this roux to get that chowdery look, that texture that a good clam chowder has. I'm just gonna add a little bit at a time and then stir it in. Add a little bit, stir it in. You want this to stay kind of thick because you're gonna add all of this into here and it's gonna thin it out pretty good. So make sure you make this thick. Don't worry if it looks more like mashed potatoes than a soup. While you're cooking, everything's gonna look and smell so good that you're gonna wanna take a bite of this catfish, but don't do it. Because remember, we didn't cook it all the way through. Very important. After you put all your heavy cream in, make sure you put it on low. Let it simmer. You want it to be hot, but you don't want it to sit back here and boil either. Make sure you get all your lumps out from your roux, which I haven't done. So I'm going to continue to stir that until all those lumps come out. So remember in the beginning when I told you this was an experiment, it's just that. So I don't mind telling you what I may have done wrong or what I will definitely do different next time. What I'll do different next time is I will boil my potatoes first because they're taking forever to soften up and I believe it's diluting the bacon taste because I'm having to add more chicken broth. And so I'm losing that onion flavor and I'm losing that bacon flavor because I believe it's evaporating out. Haven't tasted it yet because I've never made it before, so we'll see, I'll keep you updated. All right, now that everything's cooked up and ready to go, I'm gonna start blending ingredients. First, I'm gonna pour this bacon, potato, onion mixture into a pot. Next, I'm gonna pour my catfish into the same pot. Then, I'm gonna take the cream and roux and pour that in there. Lastly, we're gonna take our salt and pepper mixture and we're gonna pour that in. We're gonna mix everything up and put it on medium heat and make sure that that catfish finishes cooking the rest of the way down. So brutal honesty update. It tastes really good actually, but I've had to add quite a bit more chicken broth because it was a little too thick. Um, I think cooking those onions and those potatoes so long kind of evaporated most of the juices that I was going to use to to thin this up so I just had to add some more chicken broth but man it, it tastes so good the flavor is good I'm not finished cooking it I just tasted the sauce the, the chowder right now but I'm gonna make sure that catfish is good and cooked before I actually start eating it all right everyone here's the finished product oh look at that this looks delicious and it tastes great too I'm gonna put some in a bowl my wife just got home so we're gonna see what she thinks she just cut me some fresh green onions from our garden. So I'm going to add those to the top. You can also add a little bit of cheddar cheese to the top if you want. All right, here it goes. Let's see what she thinks. Hey, honey. Be delicious. Mm -hmm. Here we go. Mm. Good? Still hot? It's really good. It's the best. It's really creamy and just perfect salty. And the onions are good and the bacon is good. And the fish is all melty. Mm. It's really good. I might eat this <laughs> She's hungry. She just got off work. <laughs> all right, everyone. I think it looks great. It tastes great. Anna's over here chomping down on it. She's starving. So that helps it a little bit. But, uh, it was just an experiment and I think it went off well. If you want to try it, I'll put the ingredients in 
the description, but I filmed everything. I filmed even the quantities and the process for you. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. If you have any suggestions for another catch and cook, let me know. Until next time, happy fishing.